Welcome to Bloodborne Pathogens course. During this training course, we will cover the following topics. What are bloodborne pathogens? Means of transmission, diseases caused by bloodborne pathogens, controls and precautions you can use, waste disposal requirements, decontamination procedures. Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms such as viruses or bacteria that are carried in the blood and can cause disease in humans. Bloodborne pathogens include malaria, syphilis, hepatitis B or HBV, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Bloodborne pathogens are transmitted through direct contact with infected human blood or other bodily fluids. Your skin provides an effective barrier against some, but not all, bloodborne pathogens. Infected blood can enter your system through open sores, cuts, abrasions, acne, or any damaged or broken skin. Bloodborne pathogens may also be easily transmitted through mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, and mouth. Hepatitis B, or HBV, is a virus that causes infection and inflammation of the liver. It is transmitted primarily through blood-to-blood -blood contact and can lead to serious conditions such as cirrhosis and liver cancer. HBV can survive in dried blood for up to seven days. There is no cure or specific treatment for hepatitis B. Many people develop antibodies to fight the disease that may prevent future infection. HBV symptoms include mild flu-like symptoms, fatigue, possible stomach pain, loss of appetite, nausea, jaundice, and darkened urine. Employees who have routine exposure to bloodborne pathogens, such as doctors, nurses, and first aid responders are offered the hepatitis B vaccine series unless they have previously received the vaccine series, antibody testing has revealed that they are immune, or the vaccine is not recommended for medical reasons. The HBV vaccination process consists of a series of three shots. The second shot is given one month after the first. The third shot follows five months after the second. This series is designed to gradually build up the body's immunities to the hepatitis B virus. Symptoms of HIV infection can vary, but often include weakness, fever, sore throat, nausea, headaches, diarrhea, white coating on the tongue, weight loss, and swollen lymph glands. AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. It may be many years before HIV actually develops into AIDS. HIV attacks the body's immune system, weakening it so that it cannot fight other deadly diseases. AIDS is a fatal disease, and while treatment for it is improving, there is no known cure. The HIV virus is very fragile, and will not survive very long outside of the human body. It is primarily a concern to employees providing first aid or medical care in situations involving fresh blood or other potentially infectious materials. An exposure control plan defines the controls and precautions used to avoid exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Sections of this plan include signs and labels, segregation of waste, special containers, personal protective equipment, universal precautions for protection against bloodborne pathogens. Warning signs or labels must be placed on containers used to store, transport, or ship blood or other potentially infectious materials. Regulated waste is any liquid or semi-liquid blood or other potentially infectious materials, contaminated items that would release blood or other potentially infectious materials in a liquid or semi-liquid state if compressed, or items that are caked with dried blood or other potentially infectious materials. 
All contaminated waste must be placed in special containers designed for the type of waste. Any waste that could puncture or cause a stick wound must be placed in special sharp disposal containers. The best protection against exposure is to ensure you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE. To protect yourself, it is essential to have a barrier between you and the potentially infectious material. PPE includes gloves, aprons, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation masks, medical coveralls, goggles, and face shields. Universal safety precautions should be posted in any area that is used to store or treat infectious materials. These written precautions are also required to be posted in all medical and first aid treatment areas. Universal precautions include procedures for hygiene and PPE, material handling, spill cleanup, contaminated clothing, and exposure reporting. Precautions also include a prohibition on smoking, eating, drinking, or food storage in areas where bloodborne pathogens may be present. It is important that you treat all blood or potentially infectious body fluids as if they are contaminated. Always wear personal protective equipment in exposure situations. Replace PPE that is torn or punctured. Properly disinfect or dispose of used PPE and remember to wash your hands immediately after removing PPE. Gloves should be made of latex, nitrile, rubber, or other water impervious material. Inspect gloves before use. Double gloving can provide an additional layer of protection. If you have cuts or sores on your hands, you should cover these with a bandage or similar protection as an additional precaution before donning your gloves. To prevent exposure, never touch the outside of used gloves. Remove clothing that is contaminated with blood as soon as possible. Use universal precautions when handling contaminated laundry. Be sure to place clothing only in approved and labeled bags or containers. If you are ever in an area where there is a reasonable likelihood of exposure, you should never eat, drink, smoke, apply cosmetics, or handle contact lenses. Don't store food or drinks in refrigerators, freezers, shelves, cabinets, or on the countertops where blood or potentially infectious materials are present. If you think you have been exposed, wash the exposed area thoroughly with soap and running water. Use non-abrasive antibacterial soap. Flush the nose, mouth, and eyes for 15 minutes if blood is splashed in mucous membranes. Other actions you should take include reporting the exposure to your supervisor, filling out an exposure report form, and requesting blood testing and hepatitis B vaccinations. All waste and contaminated clothing, or PPE, must be either decontaminated or disposed of in proper containers. Only qualified people should empty or move contaminated waste containers. All contaminated sharp objects must be placed in approved puncture-proof containers. Recap needles only with a mechanical device. Use forceps, pliers, or broom and dustpan to move needles. Broken glassware should be sterilized with an approved disinfectant solution before it is disturbed or cleaned up. Never use your hands to pick up glassware. If a spill of material containing bloodborne pathogens occurs, carefully cover the spill with paper towels or rags. Gently pour 10% solution of bleach over the towels or rags. Let them soak for 10 minutes and be sure to wear gloves to collect and dispose of all spill and cleanup waste. Use proper PPE in situations with potential bloodborne pathogens. Report all suspected exposures. Do not handle sharps or broken glass with your hands. And properly dispose of pathogen waste, used PPE, contaminated clothing, and sharp objects.